Hey guys, welcome back to a tutorial after a very long hiatus. Had a lot of personal things coming up in my life and I figured time to start making more videos and putting out more content available for people to learn and create more things. Now, in this tutorial here, we're gonna create a Discord bot revolving around Andrew Yang 2020. Now, if you don't know who Andrew Yang is, he's a Democratic candidate running for president. And if you're not familiar with anything on the news or if you don't keep track of any terms of politics or anything like that, he is a big proponent for UBI. And of course, for myself, I'm a big believer in UBI because I really like the idea of being able to spend a lot more time on things that matter to me more than being forced to work behind some slave machine or something like that, right? So with that being said, one of the cool things that I really like about Andrew Yang in particular is that he has over a hundred different types of policies on his campaign website. So right now we are in yang2020.com slash policies and we can see here that there are three big policies that everyone should be familiar with if you're interested in Andrew Yang and there are a lot, a lot of policies in many different sectors. So now that is a very interesting thing because if we were to manually copy and paste a lot of this content into, into a JSON file, that would take freaking forever. So as a result, I spent some time and I created a node module that actually parses and scrapes the yang2020.com policies website. So as we can see here, uh, we have a very simple API. It's pretty much Yang policies, which returns JSON, and that JSON is about 2,000 lines deep. There's a lot of stuff there. It's a, it gives you the count of how many policies currently, and it gives you the featured three big policies that Andrew Yang is most known for and the one he's pushing for right now. Now, some interesting things that you should be familiar with is that in this API or in the object that you get presented with in the JSON, you only have a title, a URL, and description that is seen throughout all of the policies. And depending on how uh, focused that policy is or how much um, detail has been created around that policy, there might be some more things like problems to be solved, goals, and whatnot. So in this tutorial, we're not going to do all of these properties that are available in some of the policies. We're just going to stick to the three, which is title, URL, and description. I've actually already created kind of what the visualization is going to look like, and we're going to go over to what that visualizer appears to be. So if you've never used uh, Leo V's Discord embedded visualizer, I highly recommend you use this to create high fidelity mockups for your Discord bots. And this gives you a detailed look of what that JSON structure or that data structure is going to look like when you send it to the Discord channel. And you're going to see this representation on the right side, what is going to come out. So for example, if I wanted to edit this and put, you know, number one, it'll showcase right here, number one. So it's real time and it's great because it gives you an idea of how to give a good mock-up on what you're creating towards. And it's actually, you know, it's, it's going to be pixel perfect because that's completely what Discord is rendering and it's using the CSS to render all that. So as you can see here, this is kind of what I came up with. It's quite simple, actually. You know, we just have a link to uh, the Andrew Yang website, um, yang2020.com. We have a link to that policy in particular, a description as well as an icon. And then of course the slogan, it's not right or right. It's not left or right, it's for So. With that being said, let's go ahead and let's get started with creating the bot. Great, so I'm already on my terminal here and I've opened up my terminal. And what we're gonna do is we are going to clone the starter kit for Discord created by Glitch. And I'm using this this, uh, this starter kit because it, it's pretty seamless in terms of getting started. And it also works pretty seamless with Glitch if you want to deploy your bot onto Glitch because it has the uptime um, bot that will bring up the bot constantly within every uh, set of interval of timing. So every little timeout and bring and ping the bot to bring it back up. So it's pretty useful, especially for like free hosting. If you don't want to pay for a like a Heroku $5 to have instance or whatnot. And it's a great way to create projects really quickly and that will be long lived. So we can find this starter kit at Fog Creek Starter dash discord so like all projects we're going to clone this 
starter kit. So we're gonna get clone starter kit. Cool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move that starter discord into, let's call it Yingbot. And that will just name our project to Yingbot. So let's call it Yingbot here. Cool. Great, so we're already ready to get started. Now, if you're not familiar with how to, to register your Discord bot or how to go to Developer Reporter to create that, I highly, highly suggest you go back to my very first tutorial on how to create a Magic 8-Ball Discord bot. That's probably the most primitive, basic tutorial you can get started with. And I go into a lot of detail and I spent a lot of time editing that video and I'm, I look very ridiculous in that video as well. So it gives you entertainment and it shows you pretty much how to create your bot from scratch. And I go through the process of um, the authentication mechanisms behind it, what uh, frameworks we're using, bot kit as well as the connector platform i'm not using the starter discord because this just came out recently but it'll give you an idea of how it all works in conjunction now when you step from that you come to this tutorial and this is going to give you a little step up and we're going to do something called embedded vision or embedded messages uh rich embedded messages which you saw here in the high fidelity mock-up and that's just we're going to go over that which is kind of like an additional step to learning how to create more complex bots now, with that being said, I'm already on the developer portal. I've on that build a bot page and I'm gonna get my token here. Now I'll show you my token cause it doesn't matter. I'm gonna regenerate this token at the end of the tutorial. If for an, any reason your token gets compromised, make sure to regenerate your token because someone can use your token and act and create and pretty much do whatever they want with your bot. And that would not be good. So, with that being said, we are going to open the starter kit on our, ah, oh, actually that worked. Did it work? No, it did not work. <laughs> okay, we're gonna open our starter kit on Visual Studio Code or your favorite text editor. I don't care what you use as long as it's resourceful and it's what you prefer. So let's go ahead and go over what the starter kit has to offer. Now, there's three main directories. There's a public directory, which you probably don't need to worry about. That has a lot to do with kind of the web server and kind of how Glitch hosts their tutorials. So you don't worry about that. And there's also a views directory, which is rendering those views. Now, what you should be really concerned with is what we call the skills directory. The skills directory, which is a very common format for a lot of bot kit bots, or a lot of bot kit based bots, is um, where you're gonna store a lot of your here's methods. Now, if you're familiar with the here's, uh, methods. It's just, you know, a way to create handlers so your bot can hear things that appear in, you know, direct messages, direct uh, mentions, or even uh, direct uh, or even ambient messages. So messages that occur across the entire uh, channel. And if it hears it, it'll respond to it in a wonderful format that you code out. In this case here, there's like a thanks, a built-in thanks command that already exists. And we're not gonna use it because honestly, in my tutorial here, there's no one else in my chat room. So I can't really use this thanks to send kudos to someone else, which kind of sucks, but we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna create our own here's method. So don't worry. Um, from there, one very important part is the bot.js file. Now you might see here that there's an in process.env.discord token. If you have an environment variable, you can you can actually you know set environment variable and then it will render it from that discord underscore token variable. I'm just gonna hard code my token here because it's just a lot easier to work with. I recommend if you're going to share the source code online, use a package called .env. Um, it lets you create a .env file in your directory and you can just load it into your projects and you can ignore it in your, in your version control management system and no one will have access to that, which is great. So highly recommend doing it that way. In this case, I'm not gonna show you how to do that. We're just gonna hard code that bad boy in here. And we're gonna see if everything's working. So let's go ahead and test that. So npm start. Oops, I totally forgot. We have to install our dependencies. Fast forward this because dependency installation takes forever. Two hours later. Okay, welcome back. Our dependencies are downloaded and we are ready to test out our bot. So we're just gonna hit NPM 
we're gonna just gonna type npm start i'm gonna run it and let's see what happens okay so it seems like our bot is logged in that's great and now we can get started and start coding our functionality for our bot so let's first install our dependency uh our new dependency called yang policies and that is uh, access to our json file that contains the andrew yang policies so we're going to do npm install yang policies and we're going to save that dependency um it shouldn't be that long it doesn't take that long at all great we are set to go now next what we're going to do is we are going to import that well we're going to import that onto our we're gonna import but we're going to require it or yeah, I guess import it onto our here's directory. Let's just remove all of this comments here. And we're gonna say ying policies equals require. And I'm gonna move that up a little bit here. We're gonna say ying policies. Great. We can remove this for the time being. Uh, we're not really using this, which is good for this tutorial. Um, I'm actually going to keep this response piece of code here because I'm going to actually use this random logic here, which essentially gives you a random index. <clears throat> and I'm going to keep the bot reply because that's just kind of how, uh, how we're going to respond here. So let's start with saying, well, let's start with our first command, which is going to be a policy and <clears throat> our second input. Well, and let's say, Let's do it in the context of an ambient message. Now, if you aren't familiar with an ambient message or an ambient context, what that means is in any text channel, if the bot sees the word policy, it's going to return uh, a, it's going to respond to it. And actually we're just gonna, let's just do it this way. Let's just say anytime it hears, policy, we're going to return back a Andrew Yang policy. And that, that'd be kind of interesting because <clears throat> then it might be a little annoying, but it might be a good way to showcase some of the policies that might occur. And we'll just show a random policy because I think that's a really interesting or a, a unique way to showcase a lot of these new policies. So let's start by testing this real quick. So let's comment out this constant here. And we're just going to say, I heard that. Cool and go back to your terminal. We're gonna run npm start and we're gonna swing back again to our Discord channel. And I already have a room here called the Ink Tutorial with our bot in this room. And I'm gonna say, I wonder what's good policies. Ignore my typos, I have a keyboard issue right now, but, oh wait, actually policy, oops, my bad. So. What are some good policy? Ah, what is a good policy? What is a good policy? And oh, so the Yang bot has responded and it heard that we said policy in our text message. That's great. That means we have this set up and we're ready to start showcasing what a policy might look like. So let's go ahead. Let's just turn off our bot for the time being. And we're gonna go ahead and pull in that Yang policy JSON here. Okay, uh, let's see. So if we do dot count <clears throat> and um, let's say, oh, actually, let's just pull in. Oh, actually, perfect. Let's just do it this way. So we're going to use that code from the thanks, the previous thanks command and we're just going to return a random policy that occurs that it's going to show up in this json list because when we import the yang policies it's just going to be a, a huge json list of all of andrew yang's policies and we're going to randomly generate a index and showcase that there so let's test that one more time and see what that looks like what is a good policy <clears throat> okay so, oops, uh, Ron says it's not defined. All right, what did I do here? Okay, so, oops, ah, gosh. Okay, so, 
we can do yang policies that count it's actually the same thing as length it's just a lot more intuitive that way but let's do it this way let's restart it one more time and let's test it so what is a good policy come on did it load anything oh did not like it okay so we might need to do a json.stringify because it doesn't like that it's probably a object and probably doesn't know what to do with it so let's do let's just type policy again and here we go so great so we can see here we randomly pulled a policy here and it looks like the penny makes no sense policy and we can see that the json structure is here and we can actually start working with it immediately actually so that's pretty neat so that means we're on the right track. So now let's go ahead and create the embedded visualization for it. So if you've not done this before, or if you're not familiar with what rich embeds are, I highly recommend going to discord.js rich embed guide. And that's gonna give you an idea of a pretty much the documentation regarding the rich embedded constructor. And if you aren't familiar with what a builder design pattern is it's actually a repetitive way to create or a easy way to create repetitive structures of data or data structures or any data representation in a less i guess a more intuitive way in a less uh, error prone way so in this case this uh discord rich embed is our constructor and that kind of creates our builder and that allows us to create embedded messages just using these useful uh, methods that are pretty easy to do. For example, like set the color, set the title. And if we actually look here, we can see that you know, these are pretty much analogous or analogous to what these keys are. So like set title would be the freedom dividend, um, set description would be this description here. And we're going to do that in our code here. And that's what we're going to, that's how we're going to do this. So if we go back into here, our controller actually is pretty much the bot, the, the bot kit platform connector that we're passing into the, into this here's method. And that is convenient because that actually allows us access to the discord.js rich embed constructor without having to import rich uh, discord.js like this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do this. We're going to say, controller dot rich embed create the embed and we're going to go ahead and just populate the data based on the json and based on our visualization uh, or the high fidelity mock-up that we have so let's go back to that fidelity mock-up so this is our mock-up here let's bring this here like that this is our code okay Actually, we'll keep this here and then this is our json structure so it's like kind of we have to kind of have all this in our head but we are just gonna minimize that here put this here okay this is probably the best way i could probably do this all right so if you look here our author is going to be andrew yang and the yang 2020.com so that's actually static there's no uh, need to pull in anything from the json so we're going to copy that here and let's the first thing is the title or the name of the author. And then the URL is going to be, well, instead of Discord app, let's just put gang2020.com. So, uh, did not mean to do top of that. So, gang2020.com. And we can put the, actually, oops, I messed that up. So, the icon would be here. I can see the method here. Luckily I have this uh, helper here and we're going to grab our icon here and that's going to be our third parameter. Great. So if you can see here, the name is the name of the author. This is the icon for the author and that's the URL that will, when they click on the icon or the title, the author, for example, it will showcase that. All right, next. So now that we have this piece done, we, I like to just honestly just remove this here and move on to the next thing. So let's go ahead and set the thumbnail. So embed.set thumbnail. Now I'm just familiar with this because I know it, because I've used this uh, constructor many times or this builder many times. 
if you aren't familiar, I just, like I said, just look at the documentation and that will showcase how to do that. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this URL here, this yang2020.com wp-content slash uploads slash yang underscore white dot png. And that's gonna give you the thumbnail, uh, well, pretty much the yang2020 banner on that website. Now, we're going to set the footer and let's remove this here. So let's set that footer here. So actually I've never used this. So let's see what it looks like. So, okay. So here's the text and then the icon can be anything. We're, we don't have any icon here or an icon here. So we're just going to put in that slogan or the motto of it's not left or right. It's forward. So let's put that there. All right. Now, there are a lot of variations of that slogan. So that's just the one that I copied straight from Andrew Yang's uh, tweet itself. So don't hate me if if uh, the grammar might be wrong or whatnot. I, it looks right to me. So, okay. Now the color here has to be an integer. Uh, according to the visualizer, I'm not actually entirely sure if that's true. Uh, color resolvable. So we'll see what happens here. I think putting integer should be fine. Uh, I'm not sure why the visualizer is telling me to put integer. Uh, we'll, we will see. So the color is done. And now we can reference our policy object in order to uh, fill in these remaining parts of our field or main parts of our embedded message. So let's go back here and let's do this description. So embed.set description. Okay, cool. And description, anything. So I guess it really can be anything here. So what we're gonna do is let's move this response to the policy. And we're going to copy this policy, or we're gonna reference that policy and we're gonna set it to description. And that should be right. All right, now we're gonna set the title. I actually think it's more intuitive to probably put the title up front on top here. So we're gonna do edit set title and it could be anything. So we will do the policy name. So let's do that here. Policy dot name, great. Now, last but not least, we need to just set the URL for that title. So embed set URL okay and if we look here in our policy object there's also a URL key so we can do that here so policy.url great and everything should work in this case let's just remove this JSON stringify with the response and we're just gonna send our embed message there and let's see what happens. We're gonna start that and if there's any errors, nope. Let's go back to our Discord app here and let's go ahead and test this. So, dude, did you hear about X policy? Oh no, what happened here? Embed set URL is not a function. Okay, so I'm probably messing up the builder here. So let's look at this real quick. Okay, so it's capital set URL. Uh, yeah, that should be the only issue here. So it's kind of annoying actually. All right, great. So let's do that one more time. I would be surprised if I actually messed something else up. So let's see, set thumbnail, oh crap, oh, that's terraform. Set thumbnail. Okay. Yeah, that should be, I don't think there's anything else wrong here. So let's test it one more time. Just type policy. It's easier that way. Awesome. So it looks like we have one thing that's messed up here and that's the name. Oh yeah. That's the name. It's actually dot title. If we actually look into, uh, the policy objects actually dot title, I kind of just messed it up mentally. So, that should be policy.title. 
and let's go back here and restart our bot and let's try it one more time. Hey, what's the policy? Boom, done. Right there, we can see that our in visualization of what our Discord bot was designed to do is actually showing exactly what we plan to do. So from here, technically you can host your bot and you can actually have this working in any form or context. Now there are obviously other things we can do here in the here's method. For example, we could test maybe a, you know, policy three or policy, big policies or big three policies. It could be anything really. Um, this is just to get started. And I hope this sheds some light on how to create a very basic Yang 2020 policy bot. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and tell me what other content you might guys might be interested in. I'm more than happy to create something new or something fun or exciting that might be interesting for a lot of you guys.